A while back, I received an old collection of faceted gemstones and made what might be argued was a terrible mistake in throwing them all in acetone to clean them. But in my defense, the containers reeked of cigarette smoke and I reacted instinctively. And besides, there were at least a couple of obvious cases where the jars had been reused with different stones without changing the labels, like white cubic zirconia labeled peridot kind of mislabeling. So I figured it was better to start from scratch and identify everything from first principles since I may wind up recutting and selling some in the future. By the way, I am available for commissions. There were many similar looking stones and I figured the most methodical approach would be to group items by color first. I separated them into the six primary colors, clear, orange, purple, reddish, blue, and miscellaneous. The clears are exclusively cubic zirconia, and I could make an educated guesses about several of the others, but sometimes gemstones are tricksy little hobbitses, which is why I'm glad to have a gemstone refractometer now. This is a wicked basic model, like $70 all in, so the caveats here are, I only have a little idea of what I'm doing, and I don't know how this compares to the nicer models. There's a polarizing filter to check for birefringence and a flashlight as the light source. It also comes with RI liquid that we'll talk about in a few minutes. With this model, the flashlight screws into the frame and lights the scale. Here we have the purple stones. Similar looking, but when you light them up, there are some noticeable differences. Green is kind of an interesting color for them to turn. The common purple options would be amethyst or sapphire, likely synthetic. I also have a dichroscope now, and those green ones show a distinct pleochroism. The light purple ones are slightly dichroic, showing purple to light purple shades, but contrast that with the green and purple's pleochroism of the largest stones. A quick test was to put a known stone down, in this case a color change synthetic sapphire that I cut, which, when backlit, turned the same green as some of the other synthetics. I figured the easiest stones to test would be the bigger ones, so we'll start with this purple rectangle. It reads close to 1.76 and has birefringence. Rotating the polarizer on there shows the difference in the refractive index, in this case less than 0.01, which is in line with sapphire. In the case of the purple hearts, here it is on the refractometer, and zooming in we see it hovering around 1.54, which is a good match for quartz. If you do get one of these cheaper refractometers, definitely check it against known stones so that you know if it's actually reading accurately or not, because in some cases that could be an issue. Now there are lots of caveats here. These methods don't discriminate natural from synthetic gemstones. I also only did like one test stone before filming, so I'm learning to use the instrument, and did have trouble with a few of the smaller stones later on. But the refractometer is a quick and easy way to narrow down on gemstone species. Starting with a clean faceted stone, put a drop of fluid down, then put the table side down on the glass and align the stone in the middle of the refractive window. The glass on this model of refractometer is, I think, lead glass, which is softer than quartz even, so it's uh, easily scratched if you're not careful. They do make some that are like CZ windows, I think. Once you see the shadow on the instrument, rotate the stone, check the shadow again, use the polarizer if there's birefringence, and that's all there is to it. I was relatively quickly able to separate out the amethyst from the sapphire and many other stones without really much experience. Next up was the yellows, which were separated into vivid yellow and pale yellow when backlit. The vivid yellow turned out to be sapphire, and the paler ones are citrine. Now let's talk about the refractive index fluid, or RI liquid. The composition is like methylene iodide or something nasty like that. It stinks and should be used in a well-ventilated area and avoid getting it on your skin. My jar must have been sitting around for a while because some of it had crystallized, which you don't want because the crystals of the fluid are actually harder than the glass, which is also part of why you're supposed to wipe off the liquid after every use so it doesn't crystallize on the glass. The top of my bottle also broke, so I used pliers to get the plastic dropper out. I should just rehouse it. The RI liquid in this case works for stones with refractive indices from 1.3 to 1.8, which is a good range and includes quartz, sunstone, sapphire, spinel, and many other common gemstones. It doesn't go high enough to identify cubic zirconia or diamond, which some of my old stock stones were, but CZ just looks different, so I wasn't worried about that one. Once I got in the groove, it was a straightforward process, though the angle I was looking through the eyepiece wasn't ideal, so I kind of hunched my back a little too much. I was also really glad I did this because I tested a stone I thought was topaz and had actually cut for someone saying it was topaz, but it turned out to be spinel. You know what's funny is late last year I was contacted about doing a sponsored video for a company that sells refractometers. 
What do you think? Should I have taken them up on their offer of making a three-minute video in exchange for a decent refractometer and $200? Or what do you think I was being biased? Here, nobody's paying me to say this machine is, you know, serviceable. For $70, it's a pretty good starting point. There were a lot of reds, and I'll be honest and say I still haven't checked every single one, but just like with the other colors, the backlight actually did a really good job separating out the different species. A lot of them were sapphire, but there were two subtle shades of red and purple. Putting a piece of pyrope garnet down looked nice and red and matched the lower right rows of stones here. Compare that to the more purple heart, which, let's see... I have plenty of almondine garnet from Idaho, and on the light table it's dark, but it does have a distinct purple tone that's different from the red pyrope or the cherry reddish pink sapphire. In the end, I think I'm satisfied with the separations I made into quartz, which has amethyst, citrine, and smokies. There's a couple of aquamarines, there's topaz, which are natural but likely heat-treated, would be my guess, spinel at 1.72, which is almost definitely synthetic, and lots of synthetic sapphire based on the size and clarity, and then those garnets. A refractometer and dichroscope are good indicator tools but are not wholly diagnostic by themselves and should be used with other identification methods and your common sense and experience. For me, it was probably an overdue purchase and I'm glad to have one now in my toolset.